Hello, welcome to the definitive guide on how to stop hating yourself for good. Now I'm someone who struggled with a pretty heavy depression, very low self-esteem, low mood for a very long time from about the ages of 13 to 18 and I know firsthand just how much low self-esteem affects things like your personal relationships and your worldview and your productivity. Your perception of yourself I think really dictates how well you do in life to a certain degree, how much you think you deserve, how much you think you're capable of. And even though I still experience those periods of low mood, of emotional turbulence, I've now come to a point where it's no longer directed at myself but more a natural sort of turbulence in the ebb and flow of life. I don't in my low period sort of moods go, I hate myself, this is all my fault or blame myself at all and I think it's really through my own personal work and discipline and journey that I've gone from perhaps having those self-inflicting negative thoughts to a more not necessarily positive headspace but a headspace where I can appreciate myself a little bit more and not dwell on self-deprecating thoughts. I think a negative self-image really does dictate almost how the rest of your life turns out. I mean if you don't believe that you are worthy or capable of a better relationship or of success or of anything that you think is beyond you, then even if you get those things, even if you get the perfect partner or you get into your dream school or your dream job, then your self-esteem will not be affected by that. It'll be more that you sit there and think, feel like an imposter or feel like you don't deserve it or feel like the blessings in your life are somehow misdirected or that you don't deserve them. And I think that's a real shame. I notice it a lot as someone who goes to a good university that a lot of people feel like they don't deserve to be here despite having done all of the work and being just as intelligent and capable and deserving as anyone else because they haven't taken the time to sort of assess their own self-image they are stuck in the sort of believing that they don't deserve things so i think there are really two ways in which you can improve your self-image and both I think are absolutely vital. I used to think that you could kind of do either one or the other but I now think that you need both in order to have a healthy self-image and those two ways are to improve yourself and to appreciate yourself and so I guess the difference between those two is that one is very goal-driven and achievements based whereas the other is sort of perception and feelings based. You could almost see them as kind of masculine and feminine sides to the same coin. I think self-improvement itself is a very masculine pursuit and then sort of self-love and self-acceptance is a little bit more feminine. I think that's why we see sort of male self-improvement being very focused on achievement and goals, whereas I find that feminine women tend to stray a lot more towards movements like health at every size and believing that everyone is beautiful and you should love yourself as you are. But I really do think that these two things are what everyone should overtake because what good is a great body if you hate yourself at the same time or what good is it if you have all the love in the world that you can for yourself but you are morbidly obese and you put no discipline or effort into changing that. I think it really boils down to kind of becoming someone that you can respect and then appreciating the fact that you are someone you can respect. Like for example, I always have respected people who do a lot of charity work. And as a result of that, one of the first things that I started doing when I discovered self-improvement is volunteering. And that actually gave me a very stable and a very reliable source of self-esteem because I could kind of look at it and see, you know what, maybe I'm not such a bad person. I do give my time to help other people and when other people do that I admire it and I appreciate it so there's no reason why I should continue to see myself as a bad person in that instance specifically and I think it's sort of a difficult realization to come to but a very necessary one that almost everything about yourself is malleable to a certain extent and things like your insecurities are more or less entirely within your control, if not physically changeable, then your attitude towards them is changeable. For example, with weight and body image, if you are insecure about the way that you look or the way that you feel, it is by no means impossible to eat well, to go to the gym, to make healthy choices that raise your self-esteem in that respect. Because of course you're going to have 
a low self-perception if you only keep on disappointing yourself, if you continue to act in a way that says to yourself, of course I'm not worthy of love. I don't look after myself the way that someone who loved me would look after myself. I think in order to love yourself, you really can't keep disappointing yourself. You really have to become someone that you respect and someone that you can trust. I think we really underestimate the value of being able to trust yourself and having discipline with yourself. And I don't think it's, you know, inherently masculine to be disciplined with yourself. I think everyone needs a certain degree of reliability and knowing that, you know, sometimes it sucks to do things like eat healthy or go to the gym or do the hard work. But in order to see yourself as someone who is hardworking or healthy or any trait that you find valuable, then you have to continue doing those things. I think improving yourself is perhaps the easier one of the two logistically because you probably know what you could be doing in order to improve yourself, in order to do things that make you healthier, that make you happier. You know that you should be doing certain good habits and that you should avoid other certain bad habits. But I think the appreciating yourself is perhaps more difficult for a lot of people. There are, of course, logistical ways that you can appreciate yourself, like, for example, writing things down that you're grateful for or journaling about only things that you like about yourself. For me, I think I was lucky in that a lot of my negative self-worth was more from the fact that I hadn't improved myself and I wasn't in a place where I was happy with myself. And so the appreciating myself came as a natural consequence of my achievements and my hard work. But I think for a lot of people who do work hard, it's often very difficult to take the time to kind of rest in that and to appreciate your achievements, to kind of look back and say, you know, I've, I've worked hard for this, let's take a moment and let's appreciate it. But it's absolutely vital that you, that you do. I know that I've never personally experienced this, but I know that people who are very masculine, every time they complete sort of a purpose or a mission layer, they have a moment of not excitement, not appreciation, but of hollowness, of feeling a little bit empty now that they've achieved the goal all you can do is move on to the next one and that's why i think that's why i say that i think self-improvement itself is very masculine and self-appreciation tends to be more feminine but i do for your own peace of mind and for your own self-esteem i think taking the time to appreciate your achievements and to love yourself a little bit more is very important but of course not to go all the way the other extreme and love yourself at the detriment to your self-improvement but yeah i think that's all i really have to say for today god bless and goodbye